In this video, I'm going to show you how to brew a wheat beer from grain to glass. Coming up next. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how to videos just like this one and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click the bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Every year around Christmas, we do a Christmas party with my wife's brother and I always bring some beer. And one of the beers that I bring most of the time, actually, I think every time that we've gone, has been a wheat beer. And it's been either a raspberry or a blueberry or some other variation of that. So today I'm gonna to show you how I brew that beer and we're gonna walk through everything step-by-step step from grain all the way to glass. And I'll give you the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way brewing this beer. I've brewed it many, many times. It is a real simple grain bill. It is wheat and two row and then one addition of hops and that's pretty much it. So let me get the water in the kettle, get the hoses hooked up, get everything ready to go and we'll talk about brewing it. So we've got all of our water in the kettle and we've got it heated up to our mash in temperature. And for this batch, I'm actually doing a full boil volume. So I'm doing a true brew in a bag on this one. So I'll run over some of the details of the recipe for you. So we got six pounds or 54.5% pale two row malt. We've got five pounds or 45.5% wheat malt. And then I actually used RO water. So this is an optional step for you. Um, I did add uh, 4.1 milliliters of lactic acid and that's to bring the pH down. I added 2.1 grams of calcium chloride and 1.7 grams of gypsum to the mash. Now I'll leave the numbers, the actual numbers that equates to on the bottom of the screen here for you. Obviously your system is going to vary a little bit because of the fact that I'm doing a full volume of water here for the mash. The mash schedule is 152 for 60 minutes. So it's gonna be a real simple mash. It's one of those things where if you wanna do a couple of steps, you can. Uh, there's some protein rest and some other rest that you can do with a beer that has the predominant amount of wheat. Uh, Larry over at Beer and Barbecue by Larry did a wheat beer recently and he experienced some enhancements to his beer based off of the rest that he did. One of the, one of the things that it does promote is some of the clove flavor. Um, and incidentally, the batch size is uh, five and a half gallons. And, and that's one of those things that's uh, kind of debatable. So my five and a half gallons is I want to put five gallons in the keg after fermentation and everything. So I'm counting on about a half a gallon or so left behind in the fermentation vessel. The hops for this are going to be one ounce of Tetananger at 60 minutes and they're 3.2% alpha acid, so it's really gonna put me almost a little bit below style for the beer, but I do want it to be fairly low bitterness, and that's another reason why, uh, and for those of you that do water additions, that's one of the reasons why I kept the sulfates pretty low, is because of the fact that I do wanna have a softer water profile and a softer beer. 
and I don't want to accentuate those hops. So it's going to calculate out to about 11.9 IBUs based on the boil schedule that I've got. So it should be a nice, easy, drinkable beer. And I'm going to actually add a blueberry extract to it and more on that later. But let's get mashed in and we'll let it run. And then we'll come back and uh, discuss a little bit more. All right, so we're going to be using a basket from the Bayou Classic. And I'm just going to set that down in there. And then we're also using a, a nylon bag, uh, 24 by 24 inch, I think it is. Um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of discuss on this is if you had some, if you have some trouble with your system not uh, circulating very well with the wheat in it, one of the things you can do is if you have your own mill, widen the gap just a little bit on the wheat so that it doesn't produce as much flour and you'll get a little less glutens and a little bit uh, less stickiness in the mash and then tighten it back up for your pale two row. You can also use rice hulls as well, but we'll just go ahead and get, uh, get this stirred in and get it going. This is a really easy drinking palatable beer that I find a lot of people and, and, I, and I brew this for a Christmas party mainly, as I said in the beginning, uh, because there's a lot of people there that, you know, drink the other beers, you know, Bud Light, all that kind of stuff. And they really seem to like it. So it's one of those things where, you know, I feel like it's my duty to try to introduce people to, to good beer and, and try to, to uh, wean them off of the, the crap stuff, if you will. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it, I guess. But uh, if we can further home brewing or craft brewing, then I certainly like to do that. So doing a full volume here, not even anywhere near the top of the kettle, which is nice. I've actually found this method to be a pretty nice way to brew. I'll still use my Herm system and everything, but uh, I've really enjoyed both the Robo Brew brewing on it as well as this system. I did a live brew day recently with this one. And uh, so I'll just get in here and get this all stirred up. And then uh, I'm gonna be using my homemade recirculation manifold, I guess you would call it. Uh, this works really well. I used it on the last live brew day and it, it worked really, really well. So we'll go ahead and get this stirred up the rest of the way, get this put on the top of our lid here and uh, we'll start to mash it, as I said, 152 degrees and uh, we'll go from there. So the mash is over. I raised it up to 170 degrees. And the reason I did that is to kind of loosen up some of the sugars that are in the grain itself. When you raise it up to 170 degrees, it kind of locks in the conversion. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull it, the basket up. And then I've got a couple of small brackets that I have that I will use to hold it up and let it drain out into the kettle. And uh, we will go from there. So let me go ahead and cinch this bag up. Nice thing about this bag that I got, it has a couple of like drawstrings on it so I can actually kind of cinch it up like so. And then uh, when I go to lift it up, it doesn't try to fall open. So raise this thing up, put one of them in, put the other one in, slide it around the side. I think I'm just gonna let it uh, hang on an angle like that and uh, drain out. Then once that drains, we will bring it up to a boil. We'll add our hops and then we got one other addition that's kind of optional, but we'll talk about that when we get there. See you shortly. So 
as you can see by all the steam, we have reached boil. <laughs> Sorry for the noise. Uh, got my makeshift hood here. Um, one thing I want to tell you about the hops, uh, we put Tetnanger in, or Tetnang, but you can use Hallertau, any of those German noble hops you can use in it. So you might find something that's a little bit more, uh, has a little bit more alpha acid in it to raise the IBUs a little bit. But that is what we put in this particular batch, and it's going to turn out just about right, about 11 IBU, somewhere around there. It was a little bit low on my gravity, I think probably due to just, you know, still working out the kinks of the system here. My pH meter actually got broken in the move, so I've got to get another one, so I wasn't able to check the pH and adjust accordingly, but not too bad. I mean, I only missed it by 0 0.04, so not a big deal. It should boil off pretty good, and it'll be a really good, you know, still be a good beer, so going to boil and then we'll talk about a special ingredient that we're going to put in once we get to 15 minutes left in the boil we'll see you in a few all right so we got 15 minutes left in the boil and one of the things that i add that's kind of optional and this is not something that you have to add at all i will actually either use some of like brewer's best lemon peel and orange peel uh, like a lemon peel and a better orange peel i, I find bitter orange peel usually works a little bit better uh, in this particular case, I actually used a microplane and did a fresh, two fresh lemons and one fresh orange. One thing about the oranges and the uh, lemons is you make sure, you want to make sure when you zest them that you don't get any of the white pith or whatever you want to call it in there. Because if you do, that can really add a little bit of bitterness. All I'm wanting to do is just kind of accentuate the flavor of the beer with the orange and the lemon so that it makes the blueberry kind of pop. Um, if you cook with fresh fruit, a lot of times you'll do a maceration is what they call it. And it will be like some sort of an acid, like a lemon juice or something like that. And then some sugar. And that actually accentuates the flavor of whatever type of fruit you're cooking with. So I'm going to go ahead and add those in now. Like the last 15 minutes of the boil is sufficient on those. That'll be enough to extract all the oils out. Uh, we'll put our chiller in there. And then after we get done, we'll chill it down, put it in the fermenter. We're going to use uh, white, uh, the uh, WB06 and that is the uh, wheat beer yeast. And it's, it's a very neutral yeast. It doesn't have a lot of yeast character like you would think of uh, a wheat beer yeast having banana or cloves, anything like that. Um, one of the things you can do with this same recipe is if you wanna add like a German Hefeweizen yeast or something like that, you can actually create a little bit more character to it. I want it to be kind of neutral, uh, maybe just a little bit of that character, but not much. So that's why we're using that WB06. You can change it up and use whatever yeast you want. In the description, I'll have all of the recipe details as well as some suggestions for other hops, other yeast, and other things you can do with this besides what we're doing here. So I'm going to get the orange and lemon zest in, and we'll see you in a few. All right, so we're at the glass portion of the video, and I didn't show a lot of the chilling and all that stuff and transferring the fermenter. I used a glass carboy. We did use the WB06, just pitched it on the wort dry, no rehydrating or anything like that. It kicked off right away. Uh, I think it fermented what in about like two days, something like that. It was a really fast <laughs> fermentation. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it was the WB06 is pretty, uh, it's a beast of the yeast depending on the temperature. And I think it fermented right around 72 degrees. Um, the starting gravity, when I put it in the fermenter, actually I hit my target that I wanted. It was 1053. And the target gravity on the recipe, according to Beersmith, showed to be uh, 1016 was an estimate, but it actually wound up being uh, about 10, 10, 10, 11. So we wound up about 5.3% alcohol. Um, I, whenever the batch was done and I kegged it, what I did was I went ahead and carbonated it so that I could tell what it tastes like before we put the blueberry in. Pretty strong. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was uh, you could get the lemon and the orange off of it quite a bit. Yes, um, and sweet. We, so that will go a long way. Yeah, we did a couple of test to me. glasses, if you will, not even a full glass, but just like a couple of drops of this. And this is a one-on-one -on -one flavoring. And it is, I mean, it completely overpowered the beer. So I was really, really careful when dosing the keg. Just to give you an idea of how much, this is a, a two ounce bottle and the, the amount that I put in the keg was actually one of these droppers and it, it was basically just like one of those droppers, just that much right there was the amount that is I that put like in the keg. 30 
Um, it's probably, I'd say it's probably maybe one and a half, two milliliters, something like that. So oh. if you do use this, be very careful. And I would suspect that probably most of their products will be the same way because it's super highly concentrated. It smells great. I mean, just even opening it right now, I mean, I smell, yes. <laughs> it's like blueberries fill the I whole love room. blueberries. So this is going to last a long, long time. So I think it was about $12 for it, but I think it's worth every penny. Actually, now, alternatively, if you don't want to buy that or you don't have access to it, I would recommend the Brewer's Best uh, Blueberry. And I used two of those, just to give you an idea, two of two the two ounce containers. Yeah, two ounce containers in a five gallon batch to get that blueberry flavor. And then More Beer sells, I think it's Mastercraft or something. I'll leave a link down in the description for the other two products, as well as this one for you, if you want to brew this same type of beer. Now, one of the other things, just talking about this base beer, one of the things that's really good to do, and, and I've done it before, is taking a packet of lemonade, a dry lemonade unsweetened, and shandy. pour it in there for a shandy, mm -hmm. and it is really, really awesome in the summertime. It so, is. It's amazing. Um, out of curiosity, I wanted to ask a question. You know, uh, If you're interested in this type of a beer, a flavored wheat beer, what are you thinking about doing? Leave me a comment down below and, and give me some ideas of, of what you might do. You know, is it a chocolate, a raspberry, strawberry. a cherry, a strawberry, like strawberry, whatever. Leave a comment down below and let us know. But without further ado, let's get into the beer. So we're, we're probably going to see a pretty cloudy beer, I would suspect. Um, I actually did use the Blickman Quick Carb whenever are you I carbonated. Are me? Yes, <laughs> I am. And I got a little aggressive on the pour there. But I used the Blickman Quick it's Carb good. with this beer. And uh, what I did was actually ran it for one hour at 17 PSI. And then after that hour, we took a little test of it and it needed a little bit more carbonation. So I actually hooked it back up at 17 PSI. What made you do 17? That's what the chart, there's it's a like chart that comes number. with a quick carb that tells you like what temperature the beer is versus what carbonation level you want. Oh. And, and wheat beers are usually pretty highly carbonated. So I did the 17 that. PSI and yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's Buckley. looking really good. I mean, it's got a super creamy white head on it. Let's uh, let's yeah. get the nose on it. And I mean, instantly Complete you're getting the blueberry. And it might be too sweet for me, but yeah, smells, maybe I love blueberries though. Yeah, I'm it's one of those things where it's it, you know stout kind of person, but mm. and you do taste with your nose nose first. <laughs> I mean, before you taste with your tongue, it's kind of weird, but you know. Just smelling that definitely gives me the sense that it's going to taste like yeah. blueberry. So let's let's give it a taste. Cheers. It's already convincing. <laughs> we didn't get a cling there. We did. Then you have to look in <laughs> each other's eyes. Oh. And you do a toast. Wow. We used distilled water this time. Yeah, I used RO water, and I talked about that earlier in the video. And I, I think that really made a lot of difference because this thing this has yeah. a really smooth, velvety mouthfeel. Good before, but this has no after. Bite. So yeah, I mean, I think it turned out really well. I think it's going to be a great beer for the masses, if you will. A lot of people Actually, like this beer. It's, yeah, it's settled a lot. Yeah, so I mean, um, it's, it's way different. So if you make a wheat with no flavoring and then you take a drop of it and put it in, it's much more powerful because we've done that. But um, the way you had done it this time, yeah, with one dropper. Yeah, it was it was back almost whatever I could pull up out of that one dropper, this you know, squeezing it and then. This is awesome. Yeah, so I think it turned out really well. It's not too sweet. Um, it's not anything but blueberry and wheat, and it's very flowing. It's great on the palate. It's smooth. Yeah, I mean, it's got some crazy uh, lacing and head retention on it. It's it's uh, absolutely awesome. So, Brian, this is your best one. Awesome. Thank you. It's your best one. Until next time, this has been Brian. And Kelly. For Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.